As I'm sure you're aware of by now, Intel is in a little bit of trouble. CPUs are crashing, manufacturing defects, all these issues have been brought up in the past couple of months, but we can't deny Intel CPUs are crashing. This mostly affects the i9s, a couple of the i7s as well for 13th and 14th gen. With all these different kind of theories on what was going on, the real answer was just that these high single core boost clocks, such as the 14900KS, which goes to 6.2 on a single core, was actually causing degradation because of insane voltages. Intel actually has released a statement that a new microcode update 0x125 will be coming by mid-August. So just make sure you're looking out for that on your motherboard's website and to update it once it is released, even though this will not help if your chip is already degraded. But in the midst of all of these Intel issues, Intel decided to release a brand new CPU, the 14901KE. Well, what is a KE? We've actually never seen them use this suffix before, or at least I haven't. Well, it turns out that KE means it's unlocked because of the K, then the E is because it has no E cores. The one must be just a different kind of differential. This means you're right, you're only getting an eight core 16 thread CPU. So they're taking the high core counts, which people love out of these i9s and just simply throwing it away and giving you an eight core. There hasn't been any proof though that E cores actually do cause degradation. So I would not recommend disabling them. If you already have a degraded chip, that's not gonna fix your issues. The CPU doesn't seem yet to be available though to consumers, but we can still sort of test it. The way we can test a 14901KE is by anyone with an i9 can go into your simply your motherboard's BIOS and just disable the e-cores and you can get similar to performance to what's expected on the 14901KE. When looking at product sheets by Intel, you can really see that the only main difference is the total amount of L2 cache, which is actually cut in half from 32 megabytes to 16 megabytes. This will probably make a little bit of a difference in games, especially if you are using that cache. But you have to think also these 32 megabytes were spread around 16 extra E cores instead of just plain eight E cores. So how does this 14901KE actually perform? How does just disabling your E cores perform? Does it hurt your performance significantly? Does it help it? So I decided to test it out. I used my maxed out Intel gaming PC running at 2x24, 8400 megahertz DDR5 on a Z790i Lightning. The board's a beast. We have a direct die AIO on it. The CPU itself, I actually did clock down my 14900KS to 14700K speeds, just so we can get a more apples to apples comparison running at 5.7 on the P cores. Um, same thing for both. I think the most interesting thing and the most obvious difference we'll notice is in something like workstation tasks. Looking at something like Cinebench R23, you see that in the multi-core test, both do actually hit the 253 watt power limit that I set in my motherboard. The 14900K has lower clock speeds because of the increased core count and surprisingly lower temperatures. This is most likely just because the P cores aren't doing as much work, meaning they're not getting as hot. The 14901KE runs much higher P core frequencies, but still downs clocks and hits about 80C in the test with a direct die CPU. Obviously the score is one of the most important things and the 14900K scores a 35808 in the test while the 14901KE scores a 22705. That means that you will just have about 63% of your performance of the 14900K with your e-cores disabled, which sort of makes sense since you are disabling a third of your cores. But obviously most people who are doing these sort of high core count workstation like tasks aren't gonna be buying an eight core CPU. The people who would most likely be interested in this are gamers. And how does this actually perform in games? Starting with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you'll see that looking at the averages, the 14901KE actually does win in all of the metrics. The average FPS by the most, and then following with the lows. And then as we go lower into the FPS, it starts to be about the same. But obviously this benchmark is actually very GPU bound as well. It was done at 1440p low. And when looking at CPU FPS, you notice that the 14900K destroys the 14901KE. You are getting over 30 FPS more in the averages. You're getting 20 more in the lows. It's insane. This generally does destroy the 14901KE and shows that E-Cores can actually be beneficial in games. Counter-Strike 2 was also tested at 1440p low, and this shows another win for the 14900K. But I mean, look, the FPS is so high, and 
when looking at these numbers, they're so close together that it is pretty non-important. And I feel like Counter-Strike's always been one of those games that just wants to run on the P-Course. But when we're looking at just FPS metrics, there are a couple of things that kind of get taken out. We have to look at PC latency itself, especially when FPS is so high, comparing something like 1100 FPS to 1120 FPS seems kind of useless, but the actual latency itself can be a lot different. Valorant is a great example of this. Insanely high FPS, over a thousand at all times in the shooting range, but there's a PC render latency graph on there, which you can see how long it takes to fully render everything in the pipeline. When comparing the two, it becomes easier to see that the 14900K is faster and that E-Cores do especially do something. The difference in latency is about 0.1, but with the FPS being basically the same, that does show that those E-Cores are beneficial. So in conclusion, should you run out and just try and get a 14901KE if it's available? No, I wouldn't recommend it. In fact, what I would recommend doing is avoiding the i9s all in general and just getting something like a 14700K or a 14600K. Mainly a 13600K though, because it is slightly cheaper and the same thing as a 14600K. The 14700K is gonna get you that multi-core performance that you want. You're not gonna have no crazy CPU boost kind of issues. It's gonna be the best of both worlds. With, the, with 12 P cores, you're not going to really run out of cores in any task that you plan on doing in your computer for years to come. But that's the end of the video. Make sure that if you haven't already, comment down below what your thoughts on the whole Intel fiasco is. I think it's kind of blown out of the water, but you know, some people like to take it a little over the edge. If you haven't already, hit that like button down below and subscribe. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Peace.